So the last recording cut out um, for some inexplicable reason near the end of the lecture. So we're back just to cover a few more things. If we were to compare our standard least squares approach to the Tikhonov regularized approach, uh, we can see um, the least squares approach uses our um, pseudo inverse. Uh, which I've written in terms of its SVD uh, decomposition. And the Tikhonov regularization um, uses this modified thing that we have above. When we express this in terms of um, in the spectral decomposition type form, uh, we've seen this before. We basically have 1 over sigma r, uh, and then y. Um, inner product with u and then times v. So with the Tikhonov regularized form it's basically the same as that except that now instead of 1 over sigma r we have sigma r over sigma r squared plus delta. Everything else is the same. So first thing to notice is if delta is equal to zero, these are identical. Uh, if delta is much less than sigma r, then the Tikhonov expression um, terms uh, approximate 1 over sigma r, which is the least squares term. And if delta is much larger than sigma r, then this expression goes uh, to zero. So if we look down here at this plot, this black line is the least squares solution. Basically this is when uh, delta is equal to zero. And what we're plotting is the expression sigma r over sigma r squared plus delta as a function of sigma r. And of course, if delta is zero, this comes out to be just one over sigma r, which goes to infinity as sigma r goes to zero. On the other hand, as delta increases, we have these uh, green, then red, then blue plots, and we can see that there's a large region where the two expressions are essentially identical. So there's no downside for the when we have large singular values, but having a little bit of a, a delta in there. However, as uh, sigma r gets very small, this delta starts to have an impact and it in a sense caps how large any particular term in our sum for x can be. All the way down to uh, after we hit this point here, uh, the contribution then damps down to zero. So this is a way of providing the same benefits of truncated SVD but you might think about, about it as a soft truncation of the SVD. And the beauty of it is this whole thing can be expressed uh, without actually computing the SVD. All we have to do is uh, do A transpose A plus delta I, invert that. So this is looking a lot like the uh, the approximation for um, our SVD, which was A transpose A inverse times A transpose, uh, then we multiply that by Y. But here we know this is always going to work. Now why do we know this is always going to work? We know this is always going to work because something I, um, well, see because let's look at the eigenvalues in general 
you have a matrix B plus delta I. If we take B plus delta I times the eigen, an eigenvector of B, and eigenvalues lambda k so if we do this this is going to give us b v k plus delta v k but that is the same as lambda v k plus delta v k which is equal to lambda plus delta vk. So our eigenvalues are just the previous eigenvalues plus delta. Now since in our Tikhonov regularization we have A transpose A, we have a uh, symmetric matrix, we're going to have, it's going to be positive semi-definite, which means that we're going to have real positive eigenvalues, or at least real non-negative eigenvalues. If we add a quantity delta to that, then the resulting eigenvalues will all be positive. If you have a matrix with all positive eigenvalues, it's going to be invertible. So we're guaranteed that this is invertible. So now we have a situation where we never need to wander into uh, calculating the singular value decomposition come up with the pseudo inverse that works. Instead, we add this little delta uh, offset when we're calculating uh, a um, pseudo inverse just using the matrix form, and we're guaranteed to have something that behaves well.